Let's try it. Yeah. Let's All right. So, do we have to do any so stuff? I think we should Let, talk I about think, big butts. I think we should toast to freedom. All right, to freedom. To freedom. America. America. <laughs> <laughs> that literally just tasted like watered down pumpkin. Yeah. It's it's uh it's James. I was like it's shh. It's James. It's apple pie. Peach. It's not it's apple peach. Pie. I'm oh. pretty sure it's peach because no. the fruit that's in it is peach. So welcome to episode 13 of the Anarchy Roundtable. I'm Joe. I'm Christopher Cockwell. <laughs> Where's your <laughs> Cockwell hat? Fuck. That's Jesus, Danny. I need wait, that wait, Cockwell hat. Haven't like two of you guys been banned from I have. Cantwell? I know. I left without being banned. Let's continue our introduction. Okay, okay. Danny Ken, is the token ginger of the group. The token Toss ginger. It. We got our token, uh, yeah. and, and who do we have over brown here? Person. Uh, Mike. I don't think anybody Mike. heard it. We are the token, like, uh, we're, we're Americans. Not, we're we're Polacks. token, uh, what is that? Polacks. White males. So, episode 11 was all, almost all. We can't all talk at the same time. Fine. I'm pretty sure we can. We do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, Joseph. All right. So episode 11 was almost all about voting. And there was something that we touched on in that episode, but I want to get a little more thorough about it here. Um, we talked about the rational voter ignorance. Uh, I talked about it. You okay. Know, all right. Rational voter ignorance is the idea that it's rational to be ignorant about all of the... Um, Everything you would need to know to make a decision about who to vote for. And the reason it's rational to be ignorant about it is because you have, you have little chance of affecting the outcome. Well, since we recorded that episode, I got to thinking about everything that would have to happen for your vote to affect your outcome. People come up with this thing where they compare, like, you know, voting for politicians. It has all this, like, huge, like... They do all these huge things. They have impact on the whole life and society. It's so important. But you're more concerned about what features your cell phone's going to have. But it's so much more rational to have to care about what your cell phone's going to have. Because that decision that you make on your cell phone is going to have... There's a 100% chance that your decision will impact your quality of life. Now, back back to the voting thing. In order for your vote to have an impact on your life, um, first, you have to be able to choose which policies that um, will affect you in a positive way. So you have to have a lot of knowledge about like macroeconomics and all of this kind of stuff. So you have to have that kind of knowledge. Then... You have to be able to determine which politicians will engage in those um, or try to enga- um, enact those policies. And then there you face, you know, they could be lying or, or whatever. You have no idea who's going to en- um, enact those policies. Then you have to, um, the election has to be a tie and you have to be the tiebreaker in order for your vote to make a difference. Your guy has to win because you broke the tie. Your guy has to get into office, and then he has to have the power to enact those policies that you determined were good for you, and um, he campaigned on or whatever. Somehow you decided he was going to do, and then he has to enact them. But in order for him to enact them, he has all of the nonsense that is politics even if he wanted to enact something, it doesn't mean he's going to be able to. See, so and if any one of these steps goes awry, then your vote is completely fruitless. It, it does nothing to affect the quality of your life. Well, your uh, voting is effectively begging. We've known this. For well, a while. yeah. Well, then there's there's that too. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, even if you agree that voting is somehow moral or useful yeah. or something, it's still just a complete waste of time. Yeah, I'm just yeah. It's good. <laughs> that that. I actually uh, asked a guy at work uh, was handing out burn for earn burn earn, burn for Bernie or something like that. I don't Feel know. the burn. burn. No, it was burn yeah. burn a doobie for Bernie or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I sent you a picture of it. Yeah. You can put it on the show notes. Oh, but uh, I didn't see. It. 
anyway, so when we we're going this out... This says a lot about Bernie's supporters. Just, yeah, who cares? Just had to say that. I don't... But anyway, <laughs> it's, we, it's fine by me. I don't smoke it personally right now, but... Uh, so anyway, yeah, but uh, I asked the kid on the way out. I go, so who are you going to vote for? He goes, oh, I think it's just a waste of time, you know? He goes, yeah. but if the union tells me, I'll probably vote for Bernie. So I was like... <laughs> but, I mean, most... You know, even the political discussion at work, everybody agrees that it's just a complete joke and a waste of time. But then again, they are, they're, you know, real pro Democrat and all this. This might be nitpicking just a little bit. I'm not gonna really argue the moral or the or really the idea that well, we talked all about that in episode us. eleven already. Okay. Well, this might just be a little bit of nitpicking, but <laughs> your vote, if we can assume that your votes actually do count and, and you're not going to get, you know, the, the system isn't rigged. Uh, if, if that was the case, it isn't necessarily the case that it would have to be a tiebreaker because imagine if a thousand people got together and said, well, this thousand people weren't going to vote, but those thousand people decided to vote and vote together. So now, In that case, the numbers... So now you have to get a thousand people to agree with you. That's not hard. But... I mean, come on! Anybody can get a, a bunch of idiots to follow him on Facebook. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. All Facebook, you have to do is you have to have a very broad, vague appeal. But now you're not talking about voting. Now you're talking about campaigning. That's True. a different thing. True. Uh, but each of those might be effective. Voting as an individual isn't. But the campaigning won't be effective unless those individuals end up deciding to vote. At least you know for the end goal that they have in mind. It's not effective for them individually. It's effective for the person who's doing the campaigning. Well, but could, even then, even then it's not effective because of, oh, remember I said, if you the any step in that process goes awry, then it's not going to work. Well, it seems to me voting, if it were to work, needs to be reduced to a very, very small scale. Like I'm talking maybe 20. Well, like for a Liberty Fest. I think that voting works when we have like yeah, know, it's five much- or six of us and we vote. Do we want to spend money on this or do we yeah. want to make t-shirts? I guess that kind of voting works. Or if you have a corporation or if you have a business partners or whatever. Part of me wants to say that you should have to have a test to go and vote. And I know this is obviously be abused because who's administering the test? Who's you know reading the results? Yeah. But just I, I, I just yeah, cannot so stand just it. Just the whole thing of being forced being, to be part of a government is just right. fucked up. But, uh, well, yeah, but yeah, somebody just said that recently is they should have a test to vote. You talk about voting in a corporation. You but have an ownership stake. You have an ownership stake, but there's another thing that you can do. You can sell your stock. Yeah, you can't sell your stock in your... You can't sell and, your citizenship. And I think the, the selling of your stock is more powerful than You might be able to voting. sell your social security card and your it's, ID. But. Yeah, if, if, the, if the corporation does something to that many people who own shares in it don't like, the value is going to go down. And then that's more powerful than the voting. This yeah, can there's be no an actual, free market for... This can be an actually a good bridge onto something else. Let's, Look let's at bring Twitter. it to something else because we had a whole episode about voting. Look at Twitter. I mean, have you guys been following with their their safety? Is it their safety council? What do they call it? Uh, and you guys, I'm, I'm, from, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar. vaguely familiar with G- what you're talking about. Give us about. A, um, a brief summary of what you're okay. talking about. I don't remember the exact name of the council because I, I don't follow Twitter. You know, personally, you know, from a broad perspective. But essentially, what they did was they created this safety council. And what, what they're doing is, and it's, they're very vague. They're just saying that they want to protect people's safety. And they said, freedom of speech is very important, but that starts with safety. That was actually the tweet from one of the CEOs of Twitter. Mm -hmm. But the people that they appointed to this council, not a single one of them are free speech advocates. There's no Electronic Frontier Foundation. It's the number one, Anita Sarkeesian. Oh God! I'm yeah, not who? all Anita Sarkeesian. She's, she's this leftist bitch. feminist uh, who won. She's an SJW. Yes. People call her stupid or wrong on the internet, and she that's is. harassment. That's the kind of that's what she sees as harassment. And I mean, I've been blocked for saying pretty tame things on her her page, so that should show what her opinion on harassment is. And she is one of the people that is going to have a say in this new safety council. But Twitter seen a huge backlash against this when the price of their stock plummeted. 
Because apparently for the very first quarter in the history of Twitter, they're actually going to have less users than they've had in the previous quarter. So it's the first time that they haven't actually had a growth. So the stocks are just plummeting right now as people are selling out. So the the price of the stock had constant (coughs) user growth priced in. Yeah. And people backed away. So it's kind of two layers there. They did something that their user base doesn't like. The market. And then, no, I'm talking about the, that's not even really. But technically, it is the market if you are talking about mm-hmm. the people who use it. No, but the people who use it don't give them money. Well, the, the market determines popularity. Well, yeah, they do give them money. I mean, where does Twitter make money? They must make it off of their something. Advertisements they're they're advertisements. They're sponsored But ads. as a user of Twitter, you're not their customer. Their customer yeah, is you whoever are. pays Well, them. he's got a point. We're not their customer directly because we're not giving money to Twitter. We're, we're no, actually we the are product. the customer. Content. We're the, the customer product, of not the, the customer. No, no, no. The customer, is the, 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 that is absolutely the customer. The person that watches the TV and the, the commercials person, or listens to the radio or, or goes on Twitter is when, the customer. When you watch, um, say, network TV, you're not the customer. Yes, you are. No. Absolutely. You're the product. You're no. actually the customer to the cable yes. company. The cable only gives you You're, access to the No, network. when you watch the network TV through the airwaves, the customer. when you go on Twitter, you are the customer. No. And, uh, yeah, of course you are. You're the You're customer. You're the customer. You are the You're one that, giving them the any person revenue. who pays them is the customer. And the person who pays them. Now, You're you can become product. a customer. You're the no, those are I paid for Facebook advertisers. Ads. So, but that is the customer, the people who are paying for those advertisers. That's where they make their money. They don't make any money off their user base. Their user base is basically the product that they sell now, to the customers. I will grant you, there are they need to treat their their users, their viewers, their viewers, with some customer service like attitudes because they need you to come to them. But that doesn't make you a customer, and and it's a, it's an important distinction. Because you are the, the customers people, of the advertisers. The, the, adver- In a sense. the adver- so no, you are the customers of the. You're, you are of the a customer media. of the advertisers, but the advertiser mm-hmm. is the customer of the TV station, and it, and it does affect um, the way that um, programming is is made. You know. You know, for example, when you watch AMC, that's just the first thing that popped into my head. AMC doesn't get paid just from you watching. They get paid by the advertisers yeah. that pay the network, AMC, for the amount of viewers who happen to see that. And the thing is that AMC isn't paid by the cable companies. The cable companies are simply charging you for access to these networks. But as far as I know, I don't think AMC makes any it, money off of the cable companies. A- 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 some AMC of the networks do. Some, some, some networks get money from the cable. Like, like say, the um, now, if NFL that's the case, network. They get like a certain number of dollars per month per user. Well, if, and if that's the case, that's because you you pay for a subscription, so you are directly a customer in that case because you, you pay. So for I mean, even when you buy like a package of cable, um, like every channel, they get like a certain amount from the cable company. It might be like a dollar. Well, if that, if that would make you a customer, I think technically. Yeah, from the cable. But so I'm what's the point? <laughs> well, I think we've kind of. We're, we're, rambled off a little we bit. We got but. off of our point there. Um, you were talking about um, oh the censorship and the censorship Twitter. at Twitter. Yeah, yeah, censorship yeah. at Twitter. And we're, we're seeing that come up in Facebook. You know, uh, when these well, social I think this media is, is getting topic. huge and yeah, it's pretty scary because put it this way. Uh, I actually just got off like yesterday of a three day ban on Facebook. I couldn't post or send any messages. So I did it, the same thing. What? what is, oh, I didn't know you. How do you do that? I was I was banned yesterday. I was banned uh, about a month ago. So why were you, How do you guys banned? Get banned? Well, I was banned because I violated the community standards um, and uh, of yeah. what I said. Okay. Yeah, it showed me what I said. I dare you to find a chink in my armor, quote unquote. What? I dare you to find a chink. So that in my was armor. considered racist. So I don't I guess? know if it was an algorithm that picked up that I used the word chink. I don't think they use algorithms for that. Well, then who who went I back to September people, and reported it? You know what I, I mean? Because mean? oh. it was from like three, four months ago. Oh wow! So I mean, was it a? Uh, were you referring to Chinese people when you said that? No, I, I said I dare you to find a chink in my armor. I was in an argument, a debate, 
And I and I pretty much pointed out how they were wrong. I said, "I dare you to find a chink in my armor." It was a standalone post. So did you? So there was no. There it was, was no racism no, involved. There were there? some other posts. They weren't really racist. Where I got a little aggressive, but that was one of the posts that it said was infringing. But that was that. That's what blew my mind. That that's one of the posts that they said violated the community standards. Even the other ones, I don't even remember what they were. Were were reaching for straws a little bit, but not no nearly as much as this one. I find the whole censorship on Facebook thing fascinating. It's scary. Well, it's private property. It, it, it is private property. Well, I'm not... And uh, this is why... This is why I'm in favor of... We need an open source... Um, I don't even want to say social media. We need a way for things to become popular on the internet. We? Huh? We? Yeah. No, no, we is like... I, I think the human humanity race. <laughs> needs. Um, I thought you were talking about social networks. No, no, it's not even just social network because there's there's it, it, it's beyond this. We need a way for things to become popular on the internet that are not controlled by central nodes. We have a few major central nodes on the internet. You know, you've got Google, you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter. There's like there's you know, a few dozen others that are that are pretty big. We, we, See, we the thing a, is, there is needs that... to be a, a, a okay. Take the, like the lesson of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is this like this this web of you can't find a leader of Bitcoin, but you can find a leader of Google. If if you post something, like say you post um, just just. If you post something that's that, that the Chinese government doesn't want on the internet, whoever the major search engine is in China, I don't even think they can hack Google. Google, yeah. Is it yeah, Google? Google, no, Google, Google. Google. Okay, Google, Google works directly with Google. the Chinese so, government. So there we go. That, that, no, that's the perfect, Google left perfect the Chinese trip. market. When oh, this? because of that? Okay. They, the, the Google of China is... Baidu, I think is, but Google exited the Chinese market. Like yeah, they were ago. they were co-opting with so, them. Yeah, they, because they, they didn't want to co-opt with the government, but but they did for a while. They did then, for a while, and, and if, got, if the United States government, uh, the the a market in the United States is so big that if the United States government went to Google and said, "Look, we need you to take these sites down," and when they mean take them down, it doesn't mean they they go down, but. We need these sites to not come up in searches. Well, see, the thing... There's nothing Google could do but comply with that. Well, but not if necessarily. Look well, what Apple did. Well, they can yeah, find but, it, but if they get a court order and it actually but goes But is that PR or is that just... Is that purely economic reasons that Apple did that or is that... I, I don't know personally yeah, what the motivation I'm is. I'm tending to believe it's get, more get, of a... Let's fill in what, what, what did Apple okay. do. Okay, so um, due to the uh, San Bernardo terrorist attacks... Um, which attack was that? Oh, they didn't believe in the conspiracy theories. What's with the no, the no? They what, called what it, was the they, attack? They called it a terrorist attack. Seriously, what was the attack? There was a shooting in San Bernardino with uh, some some Muslims. Bernardino, whatever. Is that the uh, the couple, the yeah. man and the woman? Okay, so I wasn't sure. I don't pay attention. What to this they stuff. what the FBI did is they contacted F, uh, Apple and they said we want um, a backdoor. We want a backdoor into the um, into their phones. So we can look at their text messages and all their private messaging. And Apple said no, because if we develop, because they, beforehand, the way I understand it, before they, um, the shooting happened, Apple had installed a type of encryption that. Even Apple can't access. Yes. And if Apple were to access, well, the, the encryption, the way it works is it destroys all the information on the phone. Now, you can reverse it, but it becomes a, a, a universal key for all iPhones. Yeah. And if you were to do that, then you'd be handing over a universal key to the federal government. Well, the thing I heard on all iPhones. the radio today was the way they said it is. I don't know how true it is, but they said they want Apple to develop software to, to create a backdoor, and then That's, Apple doesn't want to do it. Right. But apparently the judge that ordered this never talk to Apple about it. They, he just ordered it without any kind of an argument from Apple. So it's it's kind of like the first step. And I wouldn't be surprised if 
it's a purely business reasons that Apple's doing this. I mean, it would be stupid of them to just say, hey, here you go in a public case like this, because then everybody say, oh, look at Apple's just, you know, that's not encryption, you know. Right. So, so it could be just a purely business so reason. So Apple is caught between their customers and the government. And they know that their customers 100% absolutely do not want the government getting into their phones. And so they're, they're coming on the side of their customers at this point but yeah is it, they, is it a freedom but they, stance or is it a I mean, if you look a business at it, stance but they well, are, is it a business of freedom but they are a central node this is where I'm going with this right Apple is a central node there's one little board of directors there's one little executive team that the government can pressure but what if what what if there were like a million you know, phone uh-huh. makers. Well, there are with open and, source software. You can get is, the Firefox is, phone yeah. ties in. So this is where where I'm going with. Um, like, imagine if if there instead of having cell phone companies, you have a mesh network, and anybody can just pop up a and tower so. somewhere and and broadcast. And you have a million cell phone companies, and you know maybe you don't have to even connect to a tower. Maybe it's in your you have a little tower in your house. And the the phones communicate with each other. So, so even if there isn't a tower, if there's somebody else with a phone nearby who's connected to their phone, you're basically talking about phone. a router. Well, yeah, um, peer networking have, uh, isn't anything new. No, it, it's, but, it's the nature but, of how networks. But what you're work. talking about is having some sort of way that someone could, for example, run a website where not only can it not be taken down, but where they can potentially advertise and get their name out without the central, you know, Google or Facebook. Yeah, um, yeah. That's... But they have, I mean, if you look at Darknet, if you've ever been on tour, uh, try actually finding anything you're looking for. You can't find Unless anything. you find a central location, such as the Hidden Wiki or something that says, here's a list of the sites that we know about. So the fact is that when you're talking about a completely decentralized network, so there's looking, no way to know it exists so unless you find well, it from I think somewhere else. So I'm looking be. for a new technology, I think, is what I'm looking Excuse for. Excuse me, gentlemen. But I people think will always be. gravitate so, to the simplest solution to what's convenient. You can have it. something that seems kind of centralized, but is not. Like Bitcoin. It seems centralized. It's Bitcoin. I can trade Bitcoin with him. You can trade Bitcoin with me. But the... Distribution, like if you take down somebody's um, uh, uh, node in Bitcoin, it does nothing to Bitcoin. There's no leader of Bitcoin. We need a search engine that way. Well, they have. I mean, even let's say you do create a search engine, right? That would be nice. It exists, but it's still on, a central location. That that one no, website, that not, search engine. Not just one website. It's, it exists across a million well, yeah, computers but, but what around I mean the is, world. What I'm saying you is, you still ultimately down. go to you know, this search engine.com or dot onion or you, dot you don't go to ITP. Bit, Bitcoin.com. All right, you're getting the Well, then how are you searching? You know, how are you getting onto this search engine without, I mean, what what is the search engine? I don't, I don't know. I don't have the technical know-how. I'm throwing out a very abstract idea that people need to think about. In a, in a, we, we've got some dogs going crazy. I'm throwing out this basic idea that I don't have the answers to. I'm saying this is something that we need, like, really geeky, smart people to work on. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that would be great. But, um, Joe. So, anyway, I think, uh, see, but, but Facebook and Twitter and Google have really brought about a lot of the freedom that we have to, to interact. I mean, you know, this is going to be on YouTube. We're going to advertise it on Facebook. We're possibly. using the nodes that exist today. But what I'm saying is, is these things, the Internet and all this stuff, is what brought about a lot of this, well, this mean, freedom. But it's um, but the problem is, is, I like to say when there's a way, there's a will. Yeah. So what happens is you get something that's a very free system, and there's billions of dollars involved in it, and then people are going to naturally be drawn to control that, whether it's the government or the companies are going to. And it's it's just a uh, it's a constant battle, you I know. As far as decentralizing it, you know, hopefully that can happen. But 
it, it's out, it's going to be a battle between decentralizing and make it more free, or and even, then the, the you powers, have, you know, that I, just like net neutrality. I think it's is important all be... to point something out, though, is that the system you're describing already exists. It's called the internet. The internet is itself a decentralized system made up of multiple networks and multiple servers that we have to. The only way we have access to it is through these centralized nodes, such as our ISP. So it's not like you know. The, the closest thing you can say is the Internet 2.0 or something, so to speak, or taking out the, the nodes, so, such as, you know, I understand why we have to pay Comcast, because I sure as hell am not going to spend millions of dollars to develop the infrastructure to connect my house to the Internet. But I understand that. But they're using the government, to, and the government are, is, is working with Comcast and all these other cable providers, you know, to, to control everything. I think and we could definitely get rid of Comcast, though. <laughs> I think the mesh network, the technology, we, yeah, we hopefully can get it'll rid of. Out. We can get rid of um, the need to um, pay for your cell phone bill, the need to pay for your Comcast bill. That's best doable peer -to -peer. with the peer-to-peer yeah, -peer networking. I, I see that coming in the future. Um, so that's one thing that can help get rid of nodes. I just I think um, it'd be slow without the fiber optic. Maybe, maybe that's just my personal well, view on it. You could have a fiber optic come to your. Um, to your house, and maybe you could your it, own little it, ISP. You know? It could play out a whole lot differently and a whole lot better and more, like he said. But the the cable companies and all that, you know, the, the internet service providers, they're just they're in bed with the government, and you know, yeah. this net neutrality stuff. It's all just a way to to keep them getting bigger and to control the flow of information, and it's just a uh, pretty evil thing you know if you can control the media you know the FCC and stuff well you know guess what we got the internet now what do we do it's taking them a while and it's gonna it's gonna be a constant battle between there is definitely a constant battle between the government and they're and doing they're they're starting to the, the, the government is moving in technology on the is moving awful fast but though the, so hopefully the technology can, is moving fast yes which uh brings me to another point i think i might have brought this up before uh you know bitcoin could be that technology uh i, I don't know if i mentioned this in a previous uh, episode about uh I think it was George Orwell wrote an article in 1949 called the um, the atomic bomb and you. Yep. And he said, if, <laughs> you, brought, "You brought that article." But up Bitcoin, and, yeah. Well, the, but basically, yeah, that, that the atomic bomb could have been a game changer to bring down governments, and hopefully, Bitcoin is this technology, and the internet is the technology that has really brought all this information where you can just want to learn something, and boom. Google it, and you know it might take you a little bit of work, but you can get, you can learn about libertarian ideas and you know nuclear physics. <laughs> yeah, but I mean you can learn about freedom and and you can learn about anything like that, you know. So that, you know, information is dangerous to the powers that be, the governments and whatever. So well, information is dangerous because it exposes the lie that it is. Yeah, we all know it. We figured out not. The vast majority of not, but we we forget it out. We yeah, we live people... in a time where the uh, right now the government doesn't control. There's losing control of the ability to control what information people get, and that is a game changer in the organization of society because it's a game changer. But they're they're they're. They're doing their best to 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 put it back to their yeah. way, and I think this and that's why I identified the nodes. Super scary. Yeah, that's why I identified the nodes as an issue. Like um, there was this and it's guy. It's scary the way the, yeah. the stuff Facebook and and Twitter and Twitter now apparently and um, what was Google, that guy? Uh, all the um, stuff you hear that they do is. But you know that's the beautiful scary. thing is we we seen with Twitter is that there was pushback. They're going to have less. They're going to lose users. They're not going to have growth. They're they're lo they're sure. No, Twitter are going to go out of business over this problem. No, but, but no. But, but, but the thing is, is there's pushback. But then it's going to go this. You know what I mean? It's, but that's the thing. Even well, the I problem mean, isn't that we need this. You know, diverse network. Because if there's a centralized point, there's not a problem with that. As long as a centralized point actually serves the needs of 
It's, you know, we might not be the direct customers, but they still have to make us happy as long as the, if they're going to have customers. Yeah. If there's, as long as there's more than centralized, one centralized, if there's multiple centralized points well, here's, and we have a choice to, to use them or to fire them. As long as, as, long the as internet, they're not being propped up or As long or as the internet remains government. relatively free, there's always going to be something else. Oh, like, look at MySpace. What, what the hell is MySpace? My, it's a thing for bands and, like, losers now, apparently. I don't know. But, uh, but it was the at, biggest social network. Why did they lose out? Because they tried, oh, this Facebook came out. Let's copy Facebook and wipe out all the stuff that our user base has put into it. They pissed off their user. I wasn't going to switch to Facebook because I had my custom background, my music, everything on it. And they wiped that all off to copy Facebook. Basically pushed everybody to Facebook. The fact is you have the big dominating force, which was MySpace, and Facebook took them over and like that. Because as long as there's the opportunity to relatively free market for you know us to migrate to other sources, then we're not going to have to worry too much about this becoming too bad. Because if Facebook gets too bad with censoring, and somebody starts, will come up with something else. Exactly, Google Plus might suck, but somebody else might come up with something better. I, I was I was hope, looking forward to Google Plus, and I, it was just horrible. I was looking forward to Google Plus. I was looking forward to Diaspora. Um. I don't know if that's how you say it. I, but I, it, it's I just kinda, think someone should fire. It's kind of like the market. Team. It's it's also very similar though to the market for government. There is a huge market out there for government and for this bullshit voting that we were talking about. So what do you mean? There's a huge market. For there's government? a huge market everybody for wants government. For free. Everybody wants government. Yeah, everybody's got a fucking but agenda. Not, but the, the, there is a huge market. I'm not saying that. We buy what? into it, but there is a huge market for government. He's got a point because there is a market. Turn the TV on right now, and you could probably find like ten different channels where they're playing something about Trump. Or I had well, Trump's going to make America great again. It says so right there on his hat. <laughs> yes, that's point. I had yeah, to... but, but Wall Street and um and 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 starvation wages and stuff and, and slave wages. Slave, slave wages, wages. Thank you. <clears throat> so we we got to feel the wages burn. aren't slave. It's not slave wages, it's slave taxes. There we go. He's got yeah. a point. Taxes are, are, you, are what, slave what you I, I don't know, I'm a Bernie supporter. I don't know economics. <laughs> don't pressure me. Somebody put something on Facebook today. How many? How, how, what, what percentage of people that are politically active do you think actually understand something about economics or understand economics? Probably like 2 or 3%. I, was, I know, a bunch of yeah. the comments were like potato. You know, or something. <laughs> <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said pro- they probably think 50%, but it's probably more like, yeah, Two, three, four, five percent. I think you're overestimating. You know, I think fifty percent of well, people might think they understand. Not only do you have people who don't understand economics, you have people with economics degrees who don't understand economics. Yeah, if you if your if your basic premises and, Robert Wright and yeah, like no, I just mentioned um, I mentioned this before in another show. There's a guy who works in my office who has the a guy d- I met. No. Okay. No, he doesn't work anymore. Um, Thank God. He has a degree in economics. And Tom Woods had someone like this on his show who had a PhD in economics. This guy had a bachelor's degree. But same situation. PhD doesn't mean shit. Getting off topic. They no, have a degree really. in economics. This was their major. They studied it, whether it was undergrad or for a PhD level. In both cases, neither one of them had heard of the Austrian School of Economics. What? No, yeah, because Keynes is so popular, and then came uh, yeah. Chicago. But the yeah, entire if, degree it, is based on Keynesian. But if I your basic, if your basic premises are because are, <laughs> salty. Well, because they're just salty because all of the badass finance majors went to make millions of dollars, and they're getting paid so much below that working in a school teaching these snot nosed little brats. Those who so can't do, and that's why they teach. praise. You know, we need to raise the taxes on these bastards. I, because I wasn't good enough to, to get a finance degree, so... Well, I mean, that's I what they learned from the so beginning. I think the, one of the problems I see, and this is not just limited to uh, economists, but there is a sense of... At least Friedman kind of figured it out and, like, popularized it, but a lot of people have this... Opinion, Which Friedman? Milton. All right. Uh, a lot of people have this idea that people should be altruistic, and there's only one 
one or two people I can think of, like, that were popular. I don't mean, like, Hayek or Mises, but Mises. What I mean is, like, Ayn Some Rand... people should lie. It is well, Mises, by the way. Ayn Rand and uh, Friedman Hayek. both kind of popularized the notion that, no, you can't be altruistic. We're all kind of self-centered. Altruistic is, altruism is a lie. It's yeah, like, but, I'm bullshitting you. I'm, I'm doing this for your best. The, the fucking, thing is, I'm it, trying it, to help you out. It's, yeah, such a nice, you. it's such a beautiful lie that it's seeped in. It's everywhere. Right? Economic, it it uh, pervades our theory. whole... It, 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 it dominates our whole political system. That's well, why there's such a at, market for politics. If you look at Marx, Marx is considered, quote-unquote, an e- economist. And... His whole idea is based on altruism. And it that's a very sexy, hot lie that people want but, to live in. Or, I don't know, Marx seemed to be like a smart guy, so I'm just wondering if it... If it I never had a if job. It, no, if it was honestly like Bernie Sanders. No, if it was just a system that he came up... Did yeah, he really know this the system was No, did he really know it was bullshit and know it was no, fucking Marx, evil? Just like Bernie Sanders, it's like that crazy Jewish uncle who sits around the table going, These damn machines charging us five dollars to pull my own money out of ATM and everyone's just sitting around like, Uncle, relax. We're just Mom, trying to eat dinner and you're talking about say, ATM machines. Didn't he say that income tax is gonna bring bring about communism? It's gonna but, work the same. I mean he seemed to have a, a, a I, but I don't they know that much the about him. Merit, to be honest, they they bitch honest, about everything. But he but, seemed to have a good grasp on reality. Did, maybe he's Marx just a, or Bernie. Marx. Marx Marx no, proven wrong so many no, times. No, 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 no. I understand. No, I'm just wondering if he was just he under, fucking it, with us on purpose, you know. No, if he knew I, this was wrong, he, I think what he understood about the economy, what little he did understand, was that government um, and taxation kind of leads. Well, it is socialism. At the end of the day, it but, is socialism. But the yeah, I and think he's the, trying to popularize that and saying, well, the government is the one that can equalize all of us. But I, I, I think what what you said a minute ago is kind of like. And what I said is the underlying flaw of economics, mainstream ec- economics, is the premises. And the premise, you know, that you brought up is altruism. And the premise that I have is, is people are basically selfish. People are self-interested. And I don't think that's a bad thing. And it, if you don't understand, if you don't agree that people are are selfish, then how can you fucking understand economics? It's just well, it's it's kind of stupid. important to know. Okay, and this should show something. Karl Marx, as much as he hated the bourgeois, uh, n- like he said, he never had a job. I think he was a writer for a short amount of time. Before he was he got a camped. bourgeois, but he, yeah, he no, he was unemployed his entire life. Yeah, his but wife he, left yeah, him. But he, he never was paid. A benefactor of his rich people. Engels, Engels owned factories, and Engels. Basically, kept sending money to Marx so he could keep writing his books. Not only Marx, theories. but Marx had came from a, a a wealthy family, from what I understand. Well, he, he was he 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 was a well, what do you call him? Like a beggar. He he wanted money from everybody. Give me money. He he was a very selfish, stingy person. Who even when he talked about other people in his own writings, he acted like he deserved to give the, for them to give him their, their so money. He's basically a the, the current communist. He, no, he, he he's the current <laughs> SJW. Or, Kanye West. In a sense. But this guy, I, he probably had mental issues because he, he... Just like Kanye West. If you read about him, he had, like, boils on his body because he never bathed. I, look, he was, I like Kanye's music a lot better than uh, Marx's, so... I don't know. Marx's... I don't know. Have you they heard, like, Russian theme song movie, back so, in the you know. day? That was... Karl Marx was German. Well, yeah, but they I had know, that. but, you know, communism. Yeah. So, yeah. I, mean, they, I mean, they had some good movies back, like, in the 20s or 30s or something. <laughs> <laughs> Him and his brothers. <laughs> Way to confuse the audience. They're all going to be like, I don't even know what I'm talking about. You've got Karl Marx films now? (laughs) I think, I I really feel that that was like an epiphany, though, because so many of these things like economics and politics are just so basically flawed, and I think economics and politics are very similar, and I think the basic, one of the basic premises that people don't understand is people. You don't understand, if you don't understand that people are going to do what's in their self-interest, and how can you understand anything about economics? Or how the world works. Or politics, I or anything, yeah. Economics, as it's defined, is the uh, study of how resources are deployed. 
politics is the study of how those resources should be deployed. How we uh, hold those is. resources. And most of it is very collectivistic. You know, I was... Uh, I think shut off a long time ago. Oh, yeah, my job we did, too. <laughs> We're 40 oh, minutes yeah, in. Uh, we, we've had 30 minutes without that thing, almost. Fair enough. You guys got to get some better cameras going. Yeah, I'm going to buy one. I put up a, a, a wish list on the... Uh... Yeah, because people are going to give you free shit, <laughs> yeah. Joe. Yeah. Joe, 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 Joe. In, in, order to, in order to We were just produce, talking about this about 30 seconds ago. People no. In order to produce a higher quality product for them to enjoy out of their own self interest. I donate they, to they might, School Sucks they Project. They support the show. I donate to School Sucks Project well, Mike, and uh, you're, you're Dangerous all, History Podcast. You, you're putting all your donations in the wrong pile. you got to put your donations to Joe. No. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to buy a camera that records for more than 10 minutes. Wow, you're a selfish bastard. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing I, that for us, man. For the show, because I, I care about you, Danny. What, I, I'm the one that brought the goddamn camera. Oh. I'm well, going to buy a better one. That piece, I, oh. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know what? I'm the you one might have bought that goddamn camera. rendering machine. Hey, the only reason possible. you were able to afford those machines is because society allowed you to afford them by driving on their roads, man. But yes. That's oh, You guys won't even be yeah. visible together because I've dated black women before and you try to take a picture with a black woman and it's just the coloring doesn't work so this probably won't even show up you guys one of you will be invisible or something <laughs> that, that's unfortunate because black women love me i don't know what it is it must be you know it's genetic you've diversity got a stable job you appear stable and you match their teeth insurance is a stable job well, no, you that's a news. You I wear your pe- goddamn suit to my goddamn birthday it's what the a, fuck man bro i'm wearing jeans Oh, fuck me. I didn't. I thought you were wearing. Okay, I didn't even notice. See? No tie. This is my casual look. I What's that goddamn fucking. Uh, I gotta look coat. fly everywhere I go, man. I'm on camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's solid. I'm wearing gas. I got my solid shirt on. Okay, so we went a little off. We jumped the shark at some point in this episode. No, we were talking about uh, Bernie Sanders and how you need help. You know, affording a camera. <laughs> no, it makes because, like I said, no, I mean, it's in the viewer's self-interest to help out the do. show. All right, well, you know, you're gonna have to pay better. your fair they share. Spend what's more the, than anybody. What's the the progressive tax rate on who let's, should be buying the most expensive camera? I pay more in taxes than most people make. I think. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I think sure. probably. Yeah, well, then you you could give Joe here a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, but I also have higher bills. <laughs> we don't think that far in. We don't. We don't take. I'm living the American dream. I, I make money and I spend more. You've got a money. nice house. You've got a boat. Hell, you even have a, a backyard. This fucking river. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I'm living the American dream. I spend more than I make. <laughs> you know, at this point, Mike, I kind of wish there was a little bit of lead in your water. Just, just. Just to make things equal? <laughs> yes. That's why I drink bottled water. <laughs> Let's take a break. Yes, but... Do you yep. on? Return <laughs> to the we, round table. Uh, should we do another toast? Oh, yeah. We're only doing yeah. four, five minutes. Man, I'm down for that. Alright, so what happened for the... To freedom. Well, I'm out. Uh, he's out of beer. Dude, I'm out. I only had one beer. He, Jesus. Uh, hey, Zeus. beer. I shall convert the water. Oh. <laughs> We're all drunk. <laughs> Is this turning into episode five? Where's it no. coming from? Oh, no. <laughs> what kind? Average fall one? Oh, yeah. the oatmeal style. <laughs> 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 so anyway. We were getting a little off. So, well, so, no, no, no. Is, it on re- is it on record? It's, it's on record. Okay. <laughs> to, to quote you. No. Um, so what happened for the, for the audience? Um, what happened was we took a break, and during, we are at Danny's birthday party weekend. I wouldn't call it a birthday, because my birthday was on Tuesday. But, but it's your birthday party weekend. I don't know, that's what you Tuesday. called it in the uh, I just couldn't think of a goddamn name for it. Whatever, you had a birthday, you said now you're having a party. Birthday party. You got six guys on a couch and one chick over there. I mean, that sounds like a birthday to me. Yeah. I, huh. 
So, Chloe, anyway, I have $100 bills on me. <laughs> you take a credit card. <laughs> Shut up. You have like a Bitcoin uh, this one? Sim yes. um, yeah, QR you. code tattooed on your thigh. <laughs> <laughs> we all have, most of us have Bitcoin here, we know. That's a bunch of genius. <laughs> 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 Take 47. <laughs> That's hilarious. Huh. Yeah. Oh, you need a bottle opener? Yeah. Who's got a bottle opener? I got a bottle, I got a bottle opener. Anything. What do you want? Where's my, where's my This dude, he got so many Holy shit, got. man. That's impressive. Where did my yeah. keys go? It's all done. I just had I'd be that jackass like hitting it on your table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do it with somebody's. I table. should have just all so like right this here. with them. Oh, I, I got that on my hot tub. What you gotta do is get one of those belt buckles that is like a oh, seat belt. Nice. Just I put one on my dog's right. collar, but she she's not wearing her collar. Okay, she's so like we have some, new uh, right. people so, here. So let's start. Dave, over. could you introduce yourself? Wait, let's start over. Hold on, hold on. Let let Joe run the introduction. Yeah, let's yeah, let's start this over. Why so, does Joe get to do it? I because think. I'm fucking good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I you gotta control Chloe your guys, man. I can't control the guys, but I can run a fucking introduction. <laughs> he can he, 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 actually, he can cut anything he wants, so he has oh. the ultimate control. Yeah. Oh yeah, the ultimate power. Yeah, don't piss him off or you won't even be in the fucking video. <laughs> yeah. While we were taking our break, a few more guests arrived for Danny's birthday right. party weekend. His that his voice? birthday. Like that voice his, for the ride. <laughs> his birthday was Tuesday. He claims it's not his birthday party weekend, but whatever. He's got some guests over his house. A number of people arrived. And he doesn't we, take selfies either. Fuck you all of you. <laughs> We've got Dave. over here, and we have Big Tony over here. <laughs> he is pretty big, ladies. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we've all seen it. <laughs> Holy shit. I've never seen it. You're not supposed to say nothing, man. <laughs> I have never, I, I have never seen it. I've, yeah, Tony's ripped. Um, okay. You can't tell because he's got a baggy. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, him being ripped. Yeah. <laughs> I, think so, I think Danny was talking about his Should penis. Should we do like take oh my God. seven? <laughs> no, no, this is fine. This is <laughs> Perfectly fine. All the audience is gonna see is six dudes sitting around talking about Tony's dick, but yeah, I'm not. No, Dave's like, true. leave me the fuck out of this conversation. I don't even drink. <laughs> Dave doesn't drink. Uh, oh no! I pulled this out of the fridge. It's in the freezer still. Yeah. So we fucked up. I did. So where do we go from here? We're introduced. Yeah, we're introduced. What did you guys talk about? Sorry. I and it's not to do or anything, but I'm just So, yeah, what, you know, what is the Anarchy Round? Maybe let's a, recap a little summer. bit. Yeah, yeah no, right? let's re and what, is, what is our mission, though? What is our mission, Dave? We're going to do an introductory video that covers just that. Yeah, well, that's, I think that's we that's should talk about idea. right now. Well, that's actually a good idea because you guys have a YouTube channel. You can have that set as your introductory part of oh, the YouTube that's channel. That's Separate. Sometimes Thanks, people do. We are going to show an introductory video. How about you, Dave? If they're exciting. Dave, you're a... An intelligent person who hasn't I, been drinking. Super what do you short. think? I don't. Know, the man, is, I don't. Hey, I'm asking I Dave a question. What do you think I the do. Anarchy Roundtable's mission is? As you it's see, more it. anarchists. Oh, yeah. okay. Fun. I say it's like education. I, I'm 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 in it to to educate to be educated. But why do you want to educate? Because I want to spread the message of uh, of uh, freedom, freedom and, and liberty, and uh, in order to what libertarianism. Get more anarchists. Yeah, there you go. So, and I want to so, have fun. To get to the next level, why do you want more anarchists? I want to have fun doing it too, though. Yes. Why do you want more anarchists? More freedom. We eventually reach a point where we take over. Yes. Or no, or we don't take over, and nobody you takes over. I, <laughs> I thought the, the point of this was to drink, vent, and basically circle jerk each other for agreeing with each other. I, I don't know. Fuck you. <laughs> it's only your second show. Well, to be fair, I mean, <laughs> I, to be fair, Ginger, it's gingers nice to don't be, get to fucking decide anything. It's nice to be in an environment where I'm not the minority, with the exception of being the whitest guy here. Uh, but beyond that, Even normally that, in my own Jimmy house, Gaffin. I'm the darkest guy here. Fuck you. Well, I hope so. <laughs> this is like Shelby Township. <laughs> Until your friend shows you're up, like, you're gonna remain the darkest guy. Oh, all right. Um. So is the question why? Okay, what was the question again? What do you think our mission? 
Why do we do this? Why do we do anarchy round table? I think I was it's because, too, actually. It's because we have... I'm in it for the pussy. No. I was. I like the idea of you guys discussing topics that are... Run, Chloe, run. Discussed about no. And then seek better right here. Clarity run, of. run to be Chloe. I, what I think for me it is, is there's a passion to want to outreach to people who are a little curious about... Anarcho curious. Yeah, I'm a little. I coined that in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll like, bet you did it. Like, honestly, Joe, you've discussed this with me at length. The whole libertarian movement, uh, and honestly, post 2008, after the uh, semi financial collapse, so. a lot of people were looking for reasons as to why the the economy had, had failed so hard. And I think in that process, a lot of us figured out the government was behind this. And I think the motivation for me anyways is just, I want more people to be aware of the fact that the government's behind of a lot of things that go horribly wrong. Not at a macro level, but even at a micro level. Like Every standing in level. line at a, at the Secretary of State, or yeah. as most people might know as a DMV. I love Jeffrey Tucker for that. He covers the mm-hmm. micro problems of government in a great yeah. way. Like he'll talk about what's wrong with your lawnmower. Yeah, because yeah, of was, the government. And I was talking to it's our friend. So pervasive. The government is everywhere in your life. It's omnipresent. In the carpet. It's, it's the reason why it, we have to keep resetting the exactly. camera. Exactly. Also, somewhere with a tag. It, Only. And that's I have a friend Actually, that works explain that, too, puts, so that burns it was kind that of burns couches for a living. What about the camera? She was on yeah. a project we, for a year and a half on, burning on, on. couches. Wait, so you're gonna... no, her job was to burn couches. Why burn couches? To see how they burn in a fire, which is not necessarily an uh, uh, unadmirable thing. But the government, the reason the, oh. the chemical company she worked for was paying her, you know. Hundred grand a year for a year and a half to burn just to couches. set fire to a goddamn yeah. couch. Yeah, that's just burning perfect. couches for a hundred grand a year. But you understand that that probably wouldn't she wouldn't be getting paid so handsomely if it were for the gov- if it weren't for the government coming and saying but every couch you produce must be able to withstand a certain temperature mm. and a certain level of. But it was all it, yeah. So she much money. So much, much money is like, made off the government <laughs> mandates and. Just crazy shit. Sarbanes, but, Oxley. But but also there would be so much more money for real things if, if yeah. people actually didn't have to, you know, if 70, 80% of our, our, our productivity didn't go towards government. You know? If you go on to any jobs, uh, you guys at home watching this show, if, you're out, if you go into any job search um, platform like Career Builder or Monster or whatever, look for... A SOX analyst. Oh my god. A Dude, what? theoretically, Stocks I could qualify analyst. for that too. Stocks? SOX. SOX? S- S- Sarbanes Oxley. Sarbanes oh. Oxley analyst. These jobs, their whole purpose is to make sure that a corporation complies with the Sarbanes Oxley Act. Yeah. Which is? It's it part is of a financial regulation. It came out of Enron when Enron was yeah. shuffling its uh, losses into its subsidiaries and maintaining and extracting the profits into. The I lost ownership. a job because of Enron. These are people who make anywhere from it lasted 80, for two months instead of two years. These are people who make anywhere from eighty to one hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year. Their entire job is to make sure that the corporation is following some stupid law. Hmm. And they, they are... They produce nothing. We've got but, three but guys. there's probably millions, of, that that's all millions and millions <laughs> yeah, of people doing shit cool like guys. that. Millions. Well, just in this country alone. Part of my job is that way. Like, right now, I have to... Um, before I send out checks to vendors, I have to make sure... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch out, catch that! Oh, oh, yeah. Nice catch. Wow. Oh. And for Chloe. You have to buy a tripod. Oh, yeah. A functional oh. tripod. Even if you spend thirty dollars on a damn thing, buy a tripod. Right, you you could more... spend like three dollars on some duct tape. <laughs> 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 duct tape. Okay. Even, I got this. Even part of my job. I got this. He's got some handy. He's waiting that's for it. So you're blocking okay. the camera. Yeah, I know. You I gotta, gotta show the duct tape now. Stay right here, Chloe. 
I never met a girl. Like that. <laughs> she is never going to want to come back again. I've never met a girl that can say no to a roll of duct tape. Oh, you should see the face she gave you. That was priceless. You better cut that part, Joe. <laughs> no, that's that's staying in. That's priceless. We're just uh, reasserting people's uh, preconceived notions about what libertarians are. Yeah, we're point. just horrible people who want to duct tape girls. These damn socialists are going to be watching this going, those rape culture misogynists. Only, only if they like it, though. Well, see, see, Chloe, what, what, what Mike pulled here was a cockwell uh, type of behavior. <laughs> Shut mm-hmm. up. He wonders why he can't get girls, and then he just, you know, rapes them and has five abortions. He does not rape them. To be fair, <laughs> I not, call, not right, Mike. Please, I call him that. Many cucks too, and I, I don't have a hard time getting. All right, let, all right. Sure. So uh, you don't show, want to brag in front of your girlfriend like that. She's one of my ladies. Oh yeah, that's a good look. All right, so this show. <laughs> all right, so this show just jumped you need a, to bar- a whole you need to ra- Borrow my roll of duct tape. <laughs> at the same time. Well, no, it's I not bet. a school shark. Okay. We're all talking at the same it's time. It's a swarm of sharks. Yeah, it doesn't work for sure. When we all talk at the same time. Well, I think what this is saying is there are a lot of people here, and we want to get together and mingle and have a good time and party and mm-hmm. stuff. And drink. We yeah, were right. having a good time. And so in other words, part yeah, two had drinking. nothing productive in it whatsoever. No, we had a couple of things in there. We introduced people and stuff. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> <laughs> we started talking. I think... I mean, all of us. Well, no. I got... Just before we end it off, I got to give props to Hannah McCoy and Dan yeah. Whalen. And um, where's my... Dude, I got it. I was just wondering what you guys were talking about before I got here on this. You can watch the video. Yeah. Well, no. this is be the whole conclusion thing. <laughs> what do you want to talk about, Tony? How about you, Dave? Say something. Guys. I was just curious what you guys. I'm were about to wrap about. up the show. The thing is, that's going to be up. really hard to. This this you know, is going to be the most topic to talk about. This man. is going to be to wrap up the show. This is going to be the most challenging show to edit ever. I don't just think let so. it flow, man. <laughs> just let it flow. I think it's going to flow. All right, we, you may as well just hey, publish it raw. Just we fun. can we can always duct tape it yeah, together. There's, there's not going to be that much. Well, at the beginning, he might have some cuts, you know, as far as who's talking, where where to cut it. But it should be pretty simple to publish because there shouldn't be much to cut out. We're just ranting the whole time. All right. Till so next week, everybody. We're we're famous. Are we going to refresh our group? <laughs> well, I was wrong, no chick shot up. <laughs> no, she's on her way. We have to be. I'm sorry. So here's what my life is like when I'm not recording Anarchy Roundtable. You can see why we do this. The gist of what I get from you is... I'm recording now. There is no public land because the public doesn't exist. What they're saying is you have a right to own... Unowned property. You have a right to own your personal property. But I mean, what should they be say. ocean or But you can't sea. have private property, property for the for rent. That's what they're against. You can't rent out property. Which, the, if he understand economics, well, he realize how that's retarded insane. that is. That's insane, yeah. Well, I, I agree that that part is insane, but yeah. but then again, there, there are... What are you doing, Joe? There are different ways of looking I'm recording at outtakes. And, and owning property and... I'm recording outtakes? How, yeah. how, how, what do you have yeah, to do to establish right? your ownership of property? You know, as like... You own your homes. labor. They're, they'll agree with that. You own no, your labor. No, what do you have to do to establish your ownership of a piece of property, say, a square mile of the ocean? Use. You have to keep, continually use it. Then, then here, at they, one point, and they create like so many Like you said, if you buy something... Huh? If you spend a million dollars to buy a, a thousand acres in the middle of the desert, whoa, 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 whoa. that means if you bought something and then you bought it for someone else who previously used it before, so why don't you just go back to use then? But then point. again, how do you define use? Where's that threshold between? Well, yeah. It's well, John Locke mixing your labor with uh, what was it? What did he say? Mixing your labor with the uh, mixing labor with land. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But you see the problem with that but is... I, I'm just saying, there, there's... Yeah, I go, I'm curious if you get, there's a line. No, yeah, it's interesting. But let's say I go out and I build line. my own house in the middle of the woods. I chop down all yeah, these trees. Like, I plant my own apple orchard. I plant all this stuff. Sure, now yeah. I have the apple orchard, and I, I, I'm the one who put all the work in mm -hmm. to, to plant these trees. Oh, you. That's, and those trees exist them. because... And a uh, guy comes on you? and says, hey, I want to pick your apples. Well, I might say, well, you know what, I can't. And starts chopping them I can't. Down. Well, you could argue that I own the trees, but then he's going to say, I, I want to pick the apples. And then I say, well, you know, uh, I'll let you pick the apples. I can't possibly pick them all. But, you know, I want a portion of the there revenue, considering I planted the trees. You bored? You bored? No. Is she? Are you bored? She's probably bored. I'm, I'm not bored. I'm just like thinking. No, it's okay. I was just curious. I mean, like I don't know. Like, you know curious. what this makes me think of? This is interesting. I mean, I, I was no talking idea. about what, what is our mission oh, statement here, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and we yeah. stopped filming a half hour ago, and we can't stop talking about this shit. No, so. like this. Well, this is what always talking about. Apple tree. You, you grow an apple tree. Right. And I put the effort in. Someone goes along and says, "I can't possibly eat all the apples," so he takes the apples. Right? Maybe yes. I'm saving those apples for winter. I don't know. Right? You know what I would say with this whole scenario? Like, does the person know that, that per another person grew that tree? What if it was like a tree that you can across? Well, you I, know. I got you gotta have to have an idea. You know what that struck by someone else. You know what that really. No, you know, know what really made me, uh, that really struck with me when you said that? Is I live in Gibraltar, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm on, uh, you know, here, the Detroit River runs from Lake St. Clair to Lake Erie. <laughs> I'm in Gibraltar, and right across from me is uh, Gross Hill, right in the middle of the Detroit River. It's been there, you know, a thousand years, a few thousand years. You know, the Great Lakes are very young, so it might only been a few thousand years. But anyway, it's been there a little while, and when the fucking the, the missionaries and shit came up the river, there was all kinds of apple trees on Gross Hill. And I've often wondered, did... Were, were they planted by the Indians, or is it just because it's such an ideal climate in the middle of a river where the where the frost doesn't get you don't get as much frost? It's a much more temperate climate in the middle of the river. There, it's the river's five six miles wide, so it's not really you know it's like it's it doesn't get as cold or as hot. You know what I mean? So it's it, it's a that's why you know, on the west coast of the country on the west coast of the state you have a lot of fruit growers. You know, and I'm just wondering, you know, who who grew those apples? I have no clue. You know, they might have been there a long time. They might have just came naturally. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure apple trees have come naturally to begin with. You know, but um, but I, I think it's kind of an important thing to point out too is when you're talking about well, you can't exploit my labor. You open up a lot of problems. Because let's talk well, about labor uh, where from. From. That statement, you cannot exploit my labor. But that's what they're basically saying. You're yeah, exploiting yeah, my I labor. Need to understand. I but here's the problem that with that. And here's here's the problem with that. Let's say I, I that. we need a factory. Somebody well, let's exploit your pong. Somebody's here. Jump in a second. Let's go you need some up capital road, to start oh, that factory. Where does There's that capital here. come from? Well, you have one guy that invests thirty thousand dollars to buy the equipment. No, I'm okay. sure I agree you're with you. Exploiting, you're exploiting the risk that he took to start that business. Well, no. Why should you have fifty percent of the ownership if he invested thirty thousand dollars in the startup capital? Well, that's he's not exploiting your labor. You my, uh, he's giving you access to his tools for a portion of your labor. That's why I wanted to talk to you about my own personal story with landscaping, which is basically the exact same thing, you know. But the other thing is, like, I'm gross, Eel Joe. Uh, the fucking Macomb brothers. You know, Macomb County? You ever hear of it? You ever hear of Macomb County? I live in Macomb County. Okay, well, the Macomb brothers bought Grosio for like, I don't know, I, I'm kind of guessing here, but I, I want to say like 700 or $3,000 plus other considerations in 1776. In 1776, they bought this island that was seven miles long and a mile wide. They bought this island, and there was Indians living on there. And the Indians said, well, I've been living here. How can you buy it off of uh, some guy who claims that he owns it, the chief or whatever? So how does that concept of I'm living here 
Well, the that thing is, how does that mesh with under a robbery? Under, under what? any other it was robbery, under an anarchist system, Maybe the guy who that. claimed he owned the land wouldn't have been able to own the land it because the you chief. have to actually put some sort of labor into it. The idea that I can just take out a map and say so, this is mine by drawing by, on by the, the map. Western concept at the time, though, this was the chief, the leader of the people, so he was authorized to sell it. So. The but, chief sold it. So if he was actually a chief and he led the people, then he'd probably have the rights somehow. Um, but again, then we're talking he? about a social construct where we're putting an individual person in charge of people. You know, under an anarchist system, you but, can't just sell land that nobody owns. If you didn't fence it off or do anything to land, then it's not yours. Some other guy can just go out there and set up shop. But I'd say, and when does it become abandoned? When do you lose rights to your property? You shouldn't it, lose rights to it. Well, if you fenced okay, it off and you say, planted a garden, it's your garden. You, you, you don't plant right. it for 10 years. You planted say it. Say my dad garden. gives me a, a, a thousand acres when I'm six months old. And I go there when I'm 10 and, you know, go hunting. And then when I'm 100, I, like, sell it to somebody. And, I mean, do I still, nobody's ever even touched that property. Do I still If nobody it? touched the property under an anarchist system, your grandfather wouldn't have owned it in the first place. How no, does he just claim he ownership owned to it, it? And then, But how did he own it? Well, maybe. He can't just go, that's my property because I say so. Maybe he had cattle and he was grazing this. If he was grazing acres. his cattle on it, then he owns it. But nobody grazed it for a hundred years. Nobody you could argue that it. he should have fenced it off so he can actually lay claim but to the land. I guess my point is, is there are, there are intricacies of, of land ownership that are, are arguable. Land ownership. Uh, now as far as, as far as like making money off of somebody working for you, that's, that's just a contract. That's just a personal say, yeah, I don't know. I don't want, I don't want to. Land, but I think ownership land ownership is an emergent order like language. It's, it's the, it's emerged several times. All of these I am, questions have I am been solved for multiple land ownership, times. But there are no. I mean, all of these problems that you're bringing up have been solved many times. There's no. abandonment. Yes. What if there's a fucking yeah, I think there square would be mile of the ocean law. where you're fishing and you say, "Well, I own this because I no, fish it." Like I said, if you fish it every day, you might be able to argue that you own it. But you, but with the no. ocean, you might have to find a way to fence it off somehow. The, and whole, the whole concept of homesteading and land ownership has been solved many times by the free market. It doesn't require the state. Um, Look, even today, you know, title companies actually have a bigger role in this than the government ever, does. Have you ever guys ever? Have you guys ever flown to Mexico? No. When you hit the fucking border. <laughs> Square fucking one mile squares. Oftentimes they'll have like a circle in them where the fucking gigantic half mile long spring arm spins around. But you will have everything will be in straight lines. You hit Mexico and everything's like like fucking all these fucking jigsaw puzzle looking shit. And you go to buy a piece of property in Mexico. How do you define that piece of property? There is no. In the United yeah, States, the they have, have a law. But they have no. They have a way of define how you, you can define property logically in, in words. Mexico, you can't do that. I, I've been a, a witness to a property sales. Just because it's laws. screwed up in Mexico doesn't mean this problem hasn't been solved many times. It has been. It's been I'm solved. Assuming it's, it's like that in Europe too. It's been solved. There's no way to really define property lines. There is. No. Put a fence up. It's been solved many times. Because here's the thing. If you don't put a fence up, you could argue that I own this or I you own stake, that. You stake it off. That's one way that it's been solved. You have to stake it off. You're I've been involved. I've been in landscaping for people, and I've been involved in a lot of disputes in a, in a country, in a, in, a, in a major metropolitan area where property rights are where, exactly I mean, defined, and, and people don't know where their property ends. I guarantee well, at least fifty percent of people, or uh, 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 maybe twenty percent, a large percentage of people are mistaken where their property or don't have a clear. That doesn't idea mean where it's not documented somewhere, and there's a surveyor who can but figure out exactly where it is. It, 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 it might run by the government in the United States. 
You can define it. But here's well, the yeah, thing. That's where, that's where the blockchain So sometimes you know, no, someone starts. You don't need a government to define it. Well, not blockchain. It's not even the really government that does define it. You've got these surveyors, you've got um, title companies. So I the think whole, this might be a good future topic. The whole title company thing is not run by the government. It's a completely private industry. The, the price of title insurance is regulated by the government, but the process of deciding who has title to a property is run privately. Is there a title document, a uh, government document? It's recognized by the government. No, you file it with the government.